Hexa. The first time we heard that name was early 2015 and well this big Tata is now almost here and there are a lot of questions surrounding it. Is it an SUV? Is it really an MPV? How much of it is shared with the Aria? How much of it is all new? Well, we intend to find out on our first drive here of the Tata Hexa. Our first feel for the Hexa was at the product presentation that evening. Hexa is just the beginning and our answer to this development in this segment. And we are ready for the future and you can actually expect more to come. Clearly, Tata has worked hard to deliver a very sophisticated product with the Hexa. We've, uh, we've got a new generation ABS system which gives us all sorts of possibilities in terms of control systems, so ESP, um, and uh, anti-skid control, traction control and a whole load of, cost of convenient features like uh, hill hold and, and hill descent, hill ascent uh, control. So what our engineers have done in, within this drive next is uh, the engine calibration, the ESP calibration and the torque on demand calibration have been integrated together to actually create four drive modes. We have changed the uh, frame as we call, we have made it more uh, lighter uh, because we have added a lot of features but the weight of the car remains the same so the frame has been lightened. We have changed the steering system so it is a higher flow H-pass with stiffer rack which gives lighter and responsive steering. So in all these attributes the car is significantly better not only with its past but also with the current competition. The second row to be a, a business class seat. It's a place where you can really stretch out, you can relax, you can work. We've also got for the first time the, the six seat version because the six seat version was very, very important to us. You know, when we did this, this research uh, of, of people, our customers, you know, sitting in that second row is usually where the owner sits and we really wanted that to be the best seat in the house. You know, and uh, of course, you know, without compromising, if he wanted to drive on the weekends, the driver's seat's a great place to be as well. Next morning, we got a chance to take a close look at the Hexa. Striking, tough and modern, its face says a lot. The clamshell bonnet has a strong edge. The organic hexagonal shapes and the upturned chrome bar on the grille make for a nice signature look. The LED DRLs sit with the fog lamps in a mock intake and lower down there's an inverted trapezoidal grille. It certainly looks nice and square like an SUV and Tata has worked hard to get that same feel at the rear. There's a small spoiler integrated at the top and the vertical tail lamps have been done away with. And all of this does help it look more SUV-like. But viewed from the side, the connection to the Aria is all too obvious. However, the rugged cladding running around the bottom and the 19-inch wheels help the Hexa strike a strong pose. There's also the drop-down element from the roof near the D-pillar and the fin on the shoulder which all help to give it a distinctive look. This is also where you realize that the Hexa is massive. It is longer and wider than the Mahindra XUV 500 and the Innova Crista. For the record, the sheet metal on the Hexa is completely different from the Aria, but the massive 2850 mm wheelbase is shared. And no surprises, it is identical to the Aria. The upside to that is there's lots of space. Even with the third row up, you can pack in luggage for the weekend. And if you drop the third row, which doesn't fold flat by the way, there's a lot more room for suitcases. But it's the people that get the most benefit. The Hexa comes with a bench middle row, but the one that really matters is this. Now the name Hexa came about because Tata wanted this to be a six-seater, which is why these captain seats are integral to the experience and for sure they do make the experience richer, very nice and supportive. You also get lumbar support uh, controls for the captain seats here at the back and in terms of roominess you can see there's ample room here. Uh, the front seat is set to my driving position and in fact this 
could go further back as you can see there's plenty of leg room on offer for taller passengers but sitting at the midway point liberates enough room even in the third row the second row passengers get aircon vents mounted on the b pillars and on the floor console and changes have been made to the floor pan to help improve the third row experience so how do you get into the third row well here's the interesting thing the captain seat doesn't flip forward entirely Yes, it does tumble, but that's about as much as room as you're going to get from there. So it'll actually be better if you walk down the middle between the two seats. And once you get here, well, the third row is often joked about as third degree, but that's clearly not the case here. So this is actually pretty usable. You, yes, you still do sit a little uh, knees up, but it's pretty good. And even for an adult, there's plenty of room here. And along with that, of course, you do have dedicated air vents on the side and covered cup holders here. And when you step into the front, you have a lot to appreciate. There's plenty of storage, but you can see that the rack of storage boxes mounted on the roof are gone. There is just a simple sunglass holder now. There's a color screen multifunction display sitting between the driver's instruments. There's a 10 speaker custom tuned JBL music system. There's a lot of fancy equipment, but... Now this should feel familiar because it is derived from the Aria. You can see from the dash top design and of course you've got those glove boxes. One on top which is cool and another one here. Uh, so it is a very familiar layout, but Tata has worked hard to make it look different and feel richer. And a lot of that comes down to the center console where there's this nice chunky design for the air vents and even for the Connect Next infotainment system. Uh, reminds me a bit of the Land Rover the way it sits here. Uh, the system itself is something we've seen on other Tatas, but now it gets a few more features. For instance, through Wi-Fi connectivity and with your friends in the car, you can make playlists on the go. Um, you can use your phone as a remote control. You can even use apps from uh, your phone onto the system. For instance, we've been using navigation but if it crashes on the phone, it doesn't work here either. So small little things like that. Overall quality does feel better. Still a lot of tough plastics around, but you've got a nice leather wrap steering wheel on this version that we're driving here. Uh, but still a few niggles. You can see finish, for instance. Here the JBL speaker system on the dash top. You can see that the uh, housing is not sitting flush. It's jutting out over there. And when you turn the steering wheel quickly, you'll hear a scrubbing sound. So these are three small niggles that keep you from having that wow experience inside this Tata. Also worth mentioning, the Hexa offers six airbags, ABS and ESP. Now when you get going, you can sample the Hexa's 2.2-litre four-cylinder diesel engine. It makes 156 PS of power and 400 newton meters of torque. This is then channelized through a six-speed manual transmission. Now, this is a fairly easy engine to drive as long as you're not in a big rush because torque starts building at 1500 RPM and gets strong by about 2000. But it's not like that push you back in your seat kind of torque, but it does make it fairly drivable. At 2280 kilos, the Hexa is significantly heavier than its rivals. And that blunts its performance. To really get a move on, you'll have to use the gearbox and pile on a few revs. The engine is usable even up to 4000 RPM, but it does get a bit loud past the 3200 RPM mark. Sadly, the 6-speed gearbox is a bit heavy in terms of its shifts. The clutch is light, but it's a bit springy and the bite point is a bit sharp. So, it takes some getting used to to be able to drive off smoothly. The 6-speed gearbox also helps to keep the pace going. It's when you're slotting it into 5th that sometimes you end up fumbling for that gate a bit. The manual was also equipped with the Borg Warner on-demand all-wheel drive system. Now the Hexa is primarily a rear-wheel drive machine and when required, torque is transferred to the front wheels. Up to 45% of torque can be transferred to the front wheels when required. This is of course handled by the new gen ESP system that's on offer and this is then integrated with the drive modes. So in the auto mode, the Hexa remains a two-wheel drive with torque being delivered to the front wheels as and when required and in dynamic mode, similarly, 
but it also loosens up the ESP for a sportier experience and the engine's punch is delivered in a more brisk manner. In comfort mode, in fact, you'll feel that the torque is softened. You don't feel that spike at 2000 RPM. It's just more linear, so it feels smoother to drive. And of course, in rough road mode, the ESP is calibrated differently and the wheel slip allowed is different so that you can get better work done in loose conditions. Now, coming to the automatic, this too uses a 6-speed gearbox, which is originally a design from General Motors. For now, Tata is offering the automatic only as a two-wheel drive. Within the first few kilometers, it became clear that this engine and automatic gearbox combination work quite well together. Automatics are required for the urban environment and the kind of responses that this drivetrain give you whether it's park throttle a little bit deeper to pass the car up ahead it just feels very natural. The gear shifts are smooth and pretty quick it's only when you're looking for that sudden overtaking move that you feel the need to have pushed down just a little bit harder. Now if you put it into sport mode and you get the race car mode it's quite interesting, the gearbox will keep shifting down aggressively so that the engine stays between the three to 4,000 RPM zone to give you the most amount of punch. Like that. Now if you want manual control of the gearbox, you just have to keep it in sport mode and tap the gear lever down to shift down and up to shift up. Well, the shifts are not lightning quick, but they are quick enough. The sport quotient is also boosted by the stiffer chassis, the lighter and stiffer steering rack and the retuned suspension setup. You don't feel as though you're piloting a big, tall and hulking machine actually. It feels pretty light and quick on its feet. But if you drive too enthusiastically, there will be plenty of body roll. But the real disappointment is the steering. The one thing I do not like is at highway speeds, the steering just feels a bit too light and especially at the dead ahead position, it's a bit too vague. So that feels a bit unnerving when you're settling in for a direction change. It leaves you guessing. But there is a good amount of grip available from the MRF rubber here, so there is a good sense of security. The brakes also lack feel and bite adding to the sense of vagueness about steering the Hexa. But if you're sitting in the back, you will be glad. The cabin is reasonably quiet, although there is some wind noise. Also, you will appreciate the confident straight line manners of the Hexa and its suspension setup. Tata said the recalibrated the ride, made it a little bit stiffer, damped it a little bit more so that you have better body control and on the whole, this is still a very good setup. Actually, the way it takes rough roads is really impressive. Mildly broken roads, no issue. Big potholes with sharp edges, it just glances over them and at the same time, it doesn't feel like it's lurching around on these B roads which aren't perfectly smooth either. So the Hexa isn't your uber sporty crossover, but it is enjoyable to drive at a fast but unhurried pace. A great way to cover long distances in. And given the ride quality and the space on offer, you wouldn't mind being chauffeured around in it in the city. So let's get this out of the way first. No, Tata's Hexa isn't all new and yes, it is closely related to the Aria, but the Aria was quite a capable mechanical package. And now Tata have gone and thoroughly revamped it from nose to tail to give us the Hexa. From the suspension to the chassis to the engine and of course in terms of the electronics it just gets a whole new layer of sophistication and of course let's not forget the styling it just looks more SUV like and in fact even the way it drives it does feel quite SUV more than I had expected especially because of the way it handles bad roads it just demolishes them. And along with that, you have a high seating position. It's fairly easy to drive with the option of a manual 
and an automatic gearbox. The interior is very spacious, a proper seven-seater and it's quite feature-loaded too. Of course, we could have done with better fit, finish and quality and some of the infotainment features can be a bit buggy but these are small things that we are complaining about. On the whole, the Hexa is certainly a very promising package and Tata intend to price it right this time around. And we're hoping that this manages to take Mahindra's XUV500 head on this time around.